Hi friends, it's Amanda May with Art of Design. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited that you're here. This is my 20th episode of Floss Tube, where we celebrate all things counted cross stitch, celebrate sustainable stitching, and you know, I wanna be the thread that helps connect historic needlework to contemporary needle art. So let's get started. We're gonna talk about holiday stuff today and I've got library books to show you. I've got mail call. We've got save the stitches, some miscellaneous haul. I have a new pattern to show you. No, it's not <laughs> my <laughs> sequel to Banana Pants Purdy, but it's super fun nonetheless. We're gonna talk about how <laughs> miniature kitchens and miniature things inspire me because apparently they do. <laughs> and I wanna show you my uh, notebook that I, for some silly reason, didn't show you last week. I grabbed two of the same copy instead of different copies. So I want to show you my books. All right, we're going to get started. Oh, it's been, it's been a really, <laughs> it's been a week. It has been a week. I am so happy to be here as I jostle the camera, excuse me. I don't know if you can see behind me, but I put up a tree, put up my third tree and I'm very excited about it. It has all non-breakable ornaments. I've got like the satin stitch. I put some of my cross stitch ornaments up. I've got my mid-century Santas. We got, you know, a little Wisconsin snuck in there. And I just, I really like it. It's a flocked tree and young children just love playing with that fake snow and it gets everywhere. I think flocked snow is the glitter of the holiday season. <laughs> holy moly I am wearing my Santa pin and I am wearing my ba hum pug Christmas vest I feel very festive and fancy it's never too early to start wearing your holiday gear and all denominational gear I really like the happy Lamaka. Mian Bialik wore it a couple years ago her festive Hanukkah sweater I love it all things llama and Hanukkah put together and there's just so many fun things that you can do with machine embroidery and applique knitting oh my goodness there's so many cool things <laughs> speaking of cool things I want to show you a couple more little goodies that I have as far as trees go apparently I love trees I think my obsession started when I was younger my sister-in-law put up seven trees and I was like, seven trees, that seems a little excessive. And then I grew up and I learned to not judge. And if it makes you happy and it brings you joy and it's affordable, I mean, don't go into debt getting trees. But if you have the space to store your items, to take care of your items, and it brings you joy, why not? I mean, I love it. There was a really awesome, I believe Good Housekeeping came out with an article in 2017 talking about people putting up their Christmas decorations or just general holiday decorations in general, like November 1st or earlier, and how we shouldn't judge people for doing that. It actually, it's shown like scientifically in the brain that it helps elicit positive memories of childhood. It helps build community because neighborhoods, when they see lights and whether it's through the window or outdoor lights, it signals a response, a receptive response that you are um, welcoming, inclusive, that you're approachable. So if you see people with the twinkle lights on, I'm like, wow, th th those must be fun people or loving people. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say loving people, but receptive um, to community and receptive to building community. And I just, I, I don't know, I, be, I was able to, thrift most of my trees. Most of my ornaments are also, um, I purchased secondhand either through online, so, you know, the big platforms or estate sales, yard sales, and a lot of stuff that I have made. And it brings me joy and the twinkle lights bring me joy. And if anyone's going to tell me I'm too happy, well, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. So I want to show you two of my trees. The first one I did not make, but I love it, and it came home with me. This is a ribbon tree, and it's got a bunch of different ribbon 
that I love. It's arranged with pins, the stainless steel pins. And it sits, well, wherever you want to put it, and it's child friendly. I just think this is such a great affordable I way to display ribbon or to use some of your, maybe your remnant ribbon. Speaking of remnant ribbon, this was part of my haul. I actually went to a scrapbooking store in um, like a couple towns over and I bought their remnant ribbon. It was $4. I paid retail for it. It's got rickrack and it had, I got this specifically for this orange scalloped velvet ribbon. Hello. Love it. I am not sure exactly what I'm going to use it for, but all I can think of is haberdashery trims. Bring on the decorative trims. I love it. I can't, ha, I can't wait. I love ribbon. So in, in the ode to ribbon, here's my ribbon tree. I love miniatures, like really love miniatures. <laughs> I have a lot of loves, but I love miniatures. And I have this little tree here that I got a couple years ago. And this goes in my kitchen window and it's got all the little miniature ornaments. I, I put it in a mug and it's got all the cute little wooden ornaments and it's just got a little snowman up top. And it just, it makes me smile. It's too small. I. I was gonna get some fi fiber optic lights to put inside of it, but then I thought that's just too much work. I'll enjoy it just the way it is. <laughs> so there's just a couple cute little little trees. I, I put up three trees this year, my minion tree, my My Little Pony tree, and now my flocked red tree with counted cross stitch and the mid-century plastic ornaments. I've got, I don't know if you can see, like there's a little deer and all the cute things. I, speaking of miniatures, <laughs> well, no, we'll get back to miniatures. I'll show you that in a little bit. I think we should move on. I started showing you hauls, so I feel like I should continue with that. Mm. Yes, let's continue. I have this little bookmark I got, and it is counted cross stitch. It says, ho, ho, I'm not sure of the maker but it's on a scalloped white Ada. And the back is uh, the interfacing that they ironed down. I don't know if this was mass produced or if this was handmade. It came in a little bag. I love it. The next thing I have, I got at a, the Christmas craft fair a couple weeks ago, and it is a metal tin. And the reason I got it was specifically to put my little rare earth magnet in it and then I can use it to hold some needles and it's it's just a cute little you know one of those reproduction tins to look Victorian it says happy holidays the next thing I got was a book everyone's been showing the the vintage books or not vintage books oh my goodness I'm getting ahead of myself the beautiful baskets of the Midwest Stitchers Retreat Farm Girl had the 1803 baskets and all these beautiful baskets, all the floss tubers in your baskets. Hello, love it. In honor of that, when I saw this basketry book, because again, everyone, who needs more hobbies? This lady, <laughs> I saw this book on basket weaving and it came home with me. That's part of my haul. I got I got this last year. This is a doily. And I got this last year and I think it's really neat. I don't know what the pattern name is called, but I washed it and I put it in my laundry room where it quickly got sucked into the vortex of the unseen. <sighs> anyway, I found it, it's safe, and I decided I wanted to bring it out and show it to you. I have a drying rack, and I think what happened was is I hand washed it. I used uh, Dawn dish soap, the blue Dawn dish soap. I used tepid water. I washed it. Then I used the CLR, or R, it's um, a stripping compound because I knew this was white cotton, 
and then I patted it and then I, I put it on my drying rack in my laundry room and maybe a pug went by or somehow it fell. Life, real life. Anyway, I found it, it's okay, it's safe. So I, I washed it and the staining came out. So I'm super happy about that. The next thing I have, I use, I actually use this as a dresser scarf. I have one of those, uh, one of the round tables and this is embroidered. And again, I got this and it was stained and I washed it. I need to iron it, but I folded it and I'm guilty for fold marks. <laughs> the next two items are counted cross stitch and I picked them up even though my family cannot use them, but I could not leave them behind. So they came home with me. I got this counted cross stitch baby bib and it's a little teddy bear a little bear and he's pulling his little ducks and it's one of those uh, kits I think these came blank and it had the velcro that goes around for the kids to wear and then I had a second one and it's got the cows I don't know I saw it and I just thought like Priscilla and Chelsea and their little farm theme with their with little cash casserole how cute is that? I just, I thought it was really cute. <laughs> Let's move on to mail call. I'm excited. I have a couple things to show you. First off, the fact that you all think of me and have sent me stitchy kindness. Thank you so much. I. Thank you so much. <laughs> I got a my first holiday card in the mail yesterday. And I might have ugly cried a little bit. Okay, I like a lot. I ugly cried a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much. One of my viewers from across the pond, she sent me this adorable holiday card. And it says, Bah Hum Pug. Baham Pug. Look at that. It's so cute. I love it. Thank you so much for the beautiful card and the beautiful sentiments. It really, it really warmed my heart. <laughs> the next piece of mail that I got, I'm very excited about. It is not counted cross stitch related, but it is home related, and that is my catalog from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. I plant a garden or at least attempt to plant a garden every year and this catalog it is gorgeous. It's got all of the beautiful heirloom seeds that you can purchase and plant and grow. I planted the last couple years I planted a garden and last year I did not plant a garden. I, I ended up having uh I had a kid last year, so I didn't, yeah, was it last year? Yeah, I had a kid last year. Whew. And I wasn't able to plant a garden. And the year before that, I planted a garden and it was a feast for the bunnies and the deer. The neighborhood deer like to sleep in my garden. So fencing is in order. But I love getting the catalog. They have uh, like, 80 different varieties of heirloom tomatoes and let me just tell you those are the one things that I have been able to grow successfully in containers and such and it's amazing this I cannot recommend this company enough Baker Creek heirloom seeds I think they ship internationally but you um, if you go to their rareseeds.com you know this is my two pieces of mail that I got and thank you all so much all right um, moving on, what should we talk about next? We did save the stitches, we did mail call, we did haul. Let me show you what I worked on. I actually have a finish. It's not fully finished, but it's a finish nonetheless. And I used uh, some of my remnant fabric that I got from Dying to Stitch. I'm not sure who the dyer is. I want to say it's r, &R Reproductions but I'm not sure. I used the same fabric here for my gather pattern. So I used the very last piece of fabric that I had 
to work on the pin cushion for Eleanor, which is the pattern by Teresa Vanette out of the second issue two of Samplers Yesterday and Today. And I finished it. I changed all the colors. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. And I made mistakes and I just called them happy little accidents and just kept moving forward. I said, what would Teresa do? And, she, I, and I assumed Teresa would tell me to keep moving forward. I changed out the fabric. So I used Classic Color Works Old Money for the basket. I used uh, Gentle Arts Sweet Pea, which is that variegated purple. Then Classic Color Works is the Creeping Jenny, which is this white green, it, it, it's, it's a variegated, like a white into a very, very light green. And then I used an undisclosed brown in my hunt for browns, you know, the DMC taunting me. We have over 40 shades of brown, the perfect brown to fit any type. Well, when I was selecting my perfect brown a couple weeks ago, one of my kids thought it would be super duper fun to take the little labels off all my DMC that was out. <laughs> They're so cute, aren't they? <laughs> Anywho, I don't know what brown this is. I pulled out my color card and tried to match the brown up, but once the sun goes down, lighting is... <laughs> lighting can be very variable. So there's a brown there on the blue, and I love the colors that I chose. I think it's really special. I even thought if there was some way that I could use do something with both of these. I love them. My first stitch out of Teresa Zine. And again, there's my Breeze Block Sampler. Thank you all so much for your kind words and feedback on Instagram and in the comments below. Thank you so much. I. I, did you see Teresa's video? She showed it. She showed her model stitch of this. And I was like, oh my gosh. Ah! <laughs> it was so awesome. So thank you so much, everyone. And if you stitch, if you decide to stitch the Breeze Blocks sampler, tag me. Seriously, I'm at Ardith Design on Instagram. You tag me. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see it. Whew. Okay. Should we talk about miniatures again? I feel like we should. Okay. I love miniatures. And I have a lot of miniatures. And I keep saying, oh, it's for the kids. It's for the kids. And then I'm like, well, is it for the kids or is it for me? We all enjoy them. So I say it's for the family. I was cracking up so hard. I've got this little Fisher Price kitchen here. And it's got the orange and the teal. And it's got the little stove. It's got the little sink. I don't even know what edition Fisher Price, if this was Loving Family or what scale it is. I don't know. But apparently I'm very inspired by my miniatures because this is one of my new notebooks. And do you see that color palette? Do I look inspired? I think there's some like inspiration there, right? <laughs> the teal and the orange. I love it. This is one of my new notebooks. It is the new iteration of the Sketch and Stitch, which Sketch and Stitch is still available. It's still up on Amazon. But this one in the back, I put like four different fonts in the back. I've got like a big, big, like big font stuff. Um, and it's the interior of this is the exact interior of my butterfly chariot. They're the exact interiors. They're just different covers. Both are 100 pages. Both have four fonts. And both in the back have, you know, how to, how to, how to chart out fancy floss, fabric, and stitching friends. 
those are my books and then I want to thank you all so much thank you thank you for your tremendous response on the needleworkers notebook for charting cross stitch uh, your for documenting your pattern stash thank you so much I Thank you, Amy Loves Toads, for your beautiful review. I really appreciate it. It was great seeing your writing in action. And anyone, again, if you want to tag my tag me on Instagram or send me, you could message me and show me. I will say that this is an excellent resource. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like moving the camera and start jostling. The if you're if you're if you're doing like heaven and earth designs and you're you have like a hundred different floss colors I will say that is the one drawback of this book is that there isn't enough space to put down 100 different flosses I will say that however there are extra pages like a couple extra like blank pages and stuff if you need to take additional notes I am in thinking about making a notebook specifically for you stitchers that are full coverage folks and I'd love feedback if there is something you specifically would like to see in full coverage designs and speaking of full coverage designs I am working on some right now Shh. I can't I can't show them to you yet but I'm going to be coming out in 2019 with some original full coverage designs and I'm so excited about them <laughs> all right what should we talk about next giveaway let's talk about giveaway all right we're going to move forward and I'm going to extend the giveaway one more week for banana pants purdy if you would like to stitch banana pants purdy comment below and say I'd like to stitch banana pants purdy I'm gonna carry it over from last week. So if you watched my video last week and commented, you can comment again this week and then you'll have two entries. Totally cool. All right, so we're carrying that over for one more week because stay tuned next week, next Wednesday, I'm gonna premiere my second in my Sweet and Small Sampler series. I'm excited. So we're gonna do that next week. We're gonna talk all things banana pants and small and sweet next week. So stay tuned for that and then I just feel like if I'm carrying over a giveaway one more week I need to give something else away too so it's gonna be like two things like two giveaway extravaganza goodies so the next item that we're I'm giving away this is a pre owned chart I have not stitched this but it is was in my stash it is country spirits delivering snow by Homespun Elegance and it's de designed by Sandra Sullivan and their motto is designs that reflect our American heritage well quite frankly I mean I think that cute little snowmen and reindeer are like international okay if you would like to stitch the snowman just say hey Amanda May I'd like to stitch the snowman. I'll, I'll send this anywhere and just comment below. That's the giveaway stuff. And I need to show you my new pattern. Ah! I'm so excited about this pattern. I want to give a little backstory. I have a friend uh, that is local to me and she was putting up her advent cross stitch calendars for her two kids and she posted it on Facebook and I my jaw dropped to the floor my jaw dropped and I'm looking at it and I'm examining the stitching and I'm looking and it's got the little circle rings that like the lingerie rings or they're like dime size little plastic rings and you can use metal rings too and it was adorned all the way around and the stitching set in the center was a Danish themed Christmas theme in the center and then all around were the rings where you attach the little gifts or candy and you like with ribbon and tie it to the rings so she showed a picture of the two advent calendars 
and she said that they were both stitched by her great grandmother who lived in Denmark. Hello, gorgeous. So I start asking her 152 questions, right? Like who stitched them? Where did they stitch them? Can I show pictures of it? Like I overwhelmed her. And then out of the woodwork came more friends going, if you have another kid, I'll stitch you one. And then all these ladies started commenting that they also cross stitch. And, and so then I went on this like whirlwind internet search for the advent calendars. And I didn't want like creepy Santa and I didn't want like dead eyed kids cross stitch. Like there's some like kind of iffy looking cross stitch ones. Like I, I was like, no, I, I'm looking for the kit, right? I'm, uh, and I'm, I'm on Pinterest, I'm on eBay. Like I dove in, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I found the good jewel, the Swedish advent calendars and with the gnomes, hello gnomes. And everything I saw was all overseas and the shipping and it wouldn't be here in time for Christmas. And I think by hour three of my advent adventure, I decided I'd make one myself and design one myself. Yeah, I bid on a couple that are still pending on auction on eBay. So I might wind up with some kits. And then I impulse bid on a on a uh, Piran of Copenhagen kit. And I won and it's got a badger on it and our family animal like other than pugs, other than pugs, we love badgers. Nine years ago, the song came out on YouTube that badger, 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 snake, snake. Yeah, so my kids love that and we only listened to it about 92 times today. <laughs> Anywho, I've got a badger cross stitch kit coming my way. <laughs> but mm, without further ado, I have an advent that I want to show you and I'm so excited. This is my happy little Santa, and I'm calling it my sweet Santa advent. I designed him in the round here, and then I designed him with the pattern with all of the numbers around where you can put in the numbers or not. I mean, you can stitch just the central motif and leave out the circles on the numbers. And I love him. He's square. He's 180 by 180 on an 18 count Ada. He'll be 10 inches by 10 inches finished. And then I would do like a three inch margin all around 13 by 13 or four inch margin. The four inch margin just to accommodate, okay, if you want to put the little rings around to hang your gifts along the side. Or a two inch margin, but I love him. And I made him really whimsical. Uh, the first thing that I did was I drew him out. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find my concept art to show you. I put it here. I drew him out and then I used my stitching software and kind of flushed my idea out a little further. It's got 10 colors and I charted it all for DMC. But I, the, the DMC here, 3801, I charted it for, for DMC, but my inspiration was the Gentle Art Geranium, which is gorgeous, 7036, the Geranium. I love it. It's got a slight um, variegation to it. So I am going to be ordering more of this and I'm going to start stitching this. And then it's got a teal, the, the, my little swirls are in the teal. And again, it's got kind of a mid-century vibe to it. The trees, my little, my little cute trees are in a really bright uh, 907 green. Change up the colors, make this your own. But this is a pattern. And so what I've got here, I've got the pattern and I've got the one page what the pattern looks like on just one page. So it's like super small, but it gives you like kind of an idea of what it looks like. Then I have the pattern and it's nine pages in color. 
And then I also have it so you can download it the uh, nine pages in black and white with where it's just the symbols and it's not the color on symbols. And I love it and I think it's super fun. It's got that childlike whimsy to it. It has that mid-century look to it. And again, here, hearkening back to my miniatures, look at this little kitchen. And <laughs> this is my little vintage kitchen that I have. There are more pieces to it. But then I'm like, my colors, it's got the pink and the yellow and the teal. Stitch all the things, create all the things, be inspired by all of the things. Oh, I want to thank you all so much for visiting with me today. We're going to close out with library books because I love to read. Library books. Here we have this fun embroidery book. I really am enjoying it. It's got some really fun projects. Uh, embroidered cards. This one is my particular favorite, the little owls. I love it. And a book. Again, most of this is embroidery and not cross stitch. They have a cross stitch phone case in there, which it's cool. Just I'm not going to do it. And then <laughs> this book I found particularly intriguing and it is on homespun style and kind of dotted throughout this whole book is this like cheery, happy, gorgeous color palettes and textures and pretty much every photo is dotted with some sort of embroidery, cross stitch, needlepoint, some sort of textile art. And I, I was started reading through the book and I'm like, wow, my style isn't thrift store eclectic. My style is homespun. So I'm gonna take on that label. And this, again, very beautiful book, just even just to look at the photos. And the last book is Natural Color and Dyeing with Natural Fibers. And it says she, um, Sasha teaches us to look to nature for inspiration using botanicals to create subtle painterly hues. Her ecological sound approach is both ancient and modern and thoroughly in tune with the times all photographed to beautifully capture the subtlety of her work. And look, more things to learn. I wanna thank you again all for joining me this week. Comment below, like, subscribe. If you wanna be entered into either one of the giveaways, say, you know, I'd like to stitch the snowman. I would like to stitch banana pants party. You are all a joy. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for inviting me into your homes. I look forward to seeing you next week where we talk about the cute and sweet and the smalls and the cuties and the miniatures and the, ah, all the cute little things. Be well, and I'll see you next Wednesday.